Okay, so this question says if the ground state energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is this, what is the natural frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator? Ah, okay. So it helps to know some formulas that were derived in the, or that were presented in the textbook. We didn't quite derive it. This is a result that comes out of uh, analysis of the quantum mechanical simple harmonic oscillator, which is that there are a lot of energy levels are these. Uh, quantized energy levels um, are related to uh, h bar omega. Or if you want h times of frequency, it, there's the kind of connection there with the um, the, the black body oscillators. Now a bit of a complication here is that it's not just this like a photon energy. It's this times the quantized energy level quantum number plus one half, and and actually starts with a zero and then so on. and. For ideal simple harmonic oscillator potential that goes to infinity, this end can potentially go to infinity. So when he says that the ground state energy of this is this, what it's saying is that this is my E naught, E energy at n equals zero. So my E naught, which is h bar omega over two, you know, n equals zero, one half. That is equal to 1.25 electron volts. That's what it's saying. And it looks like um, the question itself is asking for natural, um, really angular frequency. I'm looking at this unit of radians per second. So I can just leave these things as they are. I think I just need to look up uh, what value reduce the Planck constant it has. Um, so, so let me do that. Um, Alpha, reduce the Planck constant. And I'm going to just program that into my calculator. So h bar in the electron volt unit, that's going to be uh, h bar is equal to 6.582 times 10 to the minus 16 electron volt a second. And yeah. So with that, I think I still need a little bit more algebra. I need to solve this for omega. So solving this for omega, I get 2 over h bar times 1.25 electron volts. So when you plug in the number for h bar, electron volt will cancel out. I'll have second on the bottom. And what you have to remember is that radian is not a real unit. Um, so when you don't see radian writ explicitly written out, it could still be there because it's not a real unit. Uh, we write radians whenever we want to remind ourselves, oh, we are dealing with unitless angular quantities. So I need to calculate 2 divided by h bar times 1.25 electron volts. Oh, I already have times 10 to the power of 15. So it should be 3.80. 3.80 radi times 10 to the 15 radians per second. And in terms of, you know, intuition for uh, what, what does that even mean? Um, it's hard to get that. So I'm just going to leave that be like what this natural frequency means. Um, you know, it's quantum mechanical simple harmonic oscillator. It doesn't actually oscillate in a classical sense. Um, now, I think this is one of the question pool questions. So if I uh, do a getter similar question, I should have some chance of getting the other question. So let me give that a try and see if I can reuse some of these. So get a similar question. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay, yeah, so that's the different question. Um, all right, I don't think I can use any of this. I'm going to clear this up and then re-answer it. <laughs> so these two are grouped into the same question as a question pool because, you know, this is a long set. So um, I was trying to reduce the total number of questions and I saw those two questions that seemed related to each other. So if you could do one, you could probably do the other. So this question says, uh, when a quantum simple harmonic oscillator makes a transition from um, this state to this state and 
emits a photon, what is its frequency? So to answer this, you have to know this uh, formula that's been derived in your, or sorry, not derived, presented in your textbook. The energy levels of simple harmonic oscillator is given by h bar reduced to, reduced to the Planck constant times omega, angular frequency of natural frequency of oscillation times, and this is the part that really only comes out of the detailed derivation, the quantum number plus one half. I think up through here, you might be able to kind of get it from what you know about the photon energy levels. It's this plus one half that you really need quantum mechanical theory to figure out that that should be there. Now, for the purpose of this question, I don't think it actually matters because what that plus one half really means is if you diagram the energy levels, then you know this is where energy is equal to zero and you're just diagramming what allowed energy levels does a simple harmonic oscillator potential that looks like a parabola shaped potential. What can it have? Um, so the constant offset, it just means, you know, your lowest possible energy level, this level here, E naught, is equal to H bar omega over two. And that every level above that goes up by this unit of H bar omega. So this is E1, which is H bar omega times three over two. And then the next level, the spacing is even here. So what's important here is that these two are two neighboring states. You actually don't really need to know what value of n it is because this spacing here is always going to be h bar omega between two neighboring states. So what this question is telling you is um, that it emits this photon and there's some energy of the photon that we are dealing with and it's saying that this energy of the photon is equal to this difference in the neighboring energy levels of um, the quantum harmonic oscillator. Now I think a lot of this will end up being super simple. Let's just write it out. So energy of the photon is Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon, or I guess since we were given the wavelength, it's a Planck's constant times speed of light divided by lambda. C over lambda gives you the frequency. We are saying that photon energy should be equal to this energy difference here, uh, h bar omega. And uh, Technically, I mean, so I have H on both sides. Let's just uh, cancel them out. H bar is H over 2 pi. And omega, I think I'm going to need to solve for this. So let me just leave omega B. Um, H actually cancels out, so I don't have to plug it in anywhere. So omega simply becomes, I have omega is equal to 2 pi times, I moved the 2 pi over. Um, c over lambda and i guess here's the thing this is c over lambda that's the uh, photon frequency so um, even though we are talking about two different things when we are talking about natural frequency we are talking about the oscillator we are not talking about the photon um, but if you just took the photon frequency and uh, multiplied it by 2 pi basically to do the unique conversion from cycles to radians then we get this answer to all right, uh, <laughs> um, it, it just uh, accidentally ended up being super simple, but you know, don't expect that to happen every single time. So I need to see, uh, which is about three times 10 to the power of eight divided by that wavelength, 495 times 10 to the power of minus nine nanometers uh, times uh, two times pi. Okay, I gotta put this through numerical the decimal approximation function. So with that, I get uh, 3.81 times 10 to the power of 15. 3.81 e 15. Oops. Yeah, that, that's it. Um, 
think the second version was uh, way simpler than the first version. Uh, like you could, uh, I can imagine someone being a little bit confused about what it's asking for, just taking this number and just converting it to omega. That will give you the correct numerical answer here, but you know that's not the physical picture that it's painting. It's a painting these energy level differences and kind of working from there. So that's this question. Let's look at the next question. That's the last one. I'm just trying to see if I can save any of these. Oh, we're not. I'll just start from scratch. Okay. So here's another simple harmonic oscillator question. Maybe that's what I was skipping. I don't remember. Uh, so it says, suppose that the vibrations of hydrogen molecule. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to doodle for a bit just to make sure I understand what they are saying. So I have a hydrogen atom. It's a, I think it's a covalently bound with another hydrogen atom. This is my H2 molecule and uh, vibrations. Of, so I guess I can imagine this vibrating uh, with a spring constant K. Okay. So um, one of the ways to express that is, um, or that, that's my spring constant. I guess um, I could have said my, the potential energy goes as one half K delta X squared, where there's some equilibrium distance. And as it vibrates around that, that's my delta X squared part. This K is that K and mass M is equal to 1.5. Oh, so once you have these two constants, um, in classical mechanics, there's a, Yes, there's a um, formula for natural oscillation frequency of a simple harmonic oscillator. And that classical formula is, well, omega is equal to square root of k over m. The stiffer the spring is, the, um, the faster it, or more frequently, it oscillates back and forth. The or heavier the mass is, the less frequently it does that. Um, yeah, and like that, no. It says, what is the vibrational frequency of this molecule? Well, I have all the information necessary to calculate the omega, and I think I'm gonna divide it by two pi and see what I get. Um, that's what the question is suggesting that I do. So let me calculate a square root of k, one point one five times ten to the power of three newton per meter. I'm just double checking that these are all in basic SI units, and I'm going to trust that the units work out as long as I plug in the numbers in the basic SI units. Divide by 1.25 times 10 to the power of minus 2017. Okay, that's my omega. Now I need to divide that by 2 pi to get the frequency. 2 times pi. Oh, and I need to put this through decimal approximation process. Okay, 1.53 times 10 to the uh, 14, that's 15, okay. So I'm gonna divide this by um, uh, 10 to the power of 15, 1, 15, 10 to the power of 15, so that I can get the mantissa here, what goes in for okay, 0 0.153, 0 0.153 times 10 to the power of 15. Let's check to make sure that it's correct says what are the energy and the wavelength of the emitted photon when the molecule makes transition between its third and second excited states okay um mm. unless question meant to this to be super difficult and making me consider different um row vibrational mode which I don't think it means me, <laughs> means to. Uh, I think we are just dealing with a one-dimensional simple harmonic oscillator. So the fact that it's between third and second excited states, that almost doesn't matter. I mean, what matters is that they are neighboring states because my ground state would have this energy, h bar omega over two. And I'm just remembering from the formula it presented in the textbook, my First excited state would be h bar omega 3 over 2. There's a 
difference, energy difference of h bar omega. So you know this keeps going uh, with the simple harmonic oscillator, quantum harmonic oscillator. The energy levels are given by h bar omega n plus one half. So at each step, energy is going up by h bar omega. So this is e two, and so there's e three, and finally e four. So this would be the third excited state. This is wait um, one two. Oh, I drew one too many. So this would be the third excited state. This is the second excited state. When the molecule makes this transition, uh, it's losing energy and energy is conserved. That energy has to go somewhere. And where this energy is going to is as a photon. That photon has, so energy of that photon is going to be this uh, um, energy of the photon. That will be the difference in the energy levels uh, from 3 to 2, which is just uh, because of this really simple relationship. The difference in the neighboring energy levels is simply h bar omega, n changes by 1. So photon energy here would be simply, do I already have omega? Um, It'll be, oh, I think in this previous expression, before I divide by 2 pi, that is omega. Um, and I need to multiply by h bar. Um, so square root, that's omega times h bar that I programmed in earlier. Um, so yeah, this omega has unit of radians per second h bar has a unit of electron volt time seconds, seconds will cancel out, and I'm left with the electron volt in the way I calculated things. So yeah, uh, 0 0.631 electron volts. That should be it. Um, it says photon wavelength, okay. Um, a couple different ways to get at it. I guess um, the one of the more direct routes would be, uh, I have energy, from energy, I can get momentum of a photon, which is its energy divided by C. Once I have momentum, then I have De Broglie relationship. Momentum of anything is Planck's constant divided by lambda wavelength. So I can solve this for wavelength. Wavelength is equal to H times C divided by its energy. So so yeah, let's just plug in the numbers. I already have h bar, uh, so 2 pi times h bar will be h times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Um, so all of that divided by the energy, which was the previous output. Um, and I think that's it. I'll just to make sure to put this through decimal approximation so that I doesn't appear as something, yeah. So that, because of all the numbers I plug in are in basic SI units, except for the electron volt unit that I'm trying to make sure it cancels out, the answer it gives me should be in the unit of meter. So to convert it to nanometer, I multiply by 10 to the power of 9. 10 to the power of 9 nanometers is 1 meter. So output times 10 to the power of 9. So 1965 nanometer, maybe that's right, 1965. Yeah, this is on the low side of energies and um, this uh, gives me something that's in the infrared. That feels right, let's give it a try. Yeah, that's it. Um,